I got a, I got a lap board. I got a lap board at the house. I'll bring you and you can have it. No, that's not the same. But they are pretty comfortable. And we we have plenty of them. We got chairs for days now. We were we were hurting a week or so ago, and now we got chairs for days. Well, Alan and Daphne are in are in Brenham this weekend, so y'all are y'all are stuck with me. Brenham. Oh sure. Drop some. <laughs> Come on, Kim. Just stir the pot. Oh, she's good at that. Oh, is she? <laughs> okay. High school senior Sunday is today. Reception in the fellowship hall immediately after the service this morning. Um, the one change, the, the parade tonight is not starting at 5.30. It's going to be at 7.30. So, 7 o'clock. It says 7.30. Yeah, Facebook. Facebook. 7 o'clock. Well, it's, well, if it's on Facebook, it must be so. That's right. <laughs> oh, cool. Good morning. Nice. Hey, Phil, good Yeah. Yeah. Due to... I just need tables. BYOT. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Because of Senior Sunday, we will not have any evening services. Like I say, the parade is somewhere between 7 and 7.30 tonight. Do you know what time it's supposed to be? It said 7 on the Gilmore website. Okay. It's probably 7. Uh, if you did not vote, in the early voting, voting the the primaries, <clears throat> primaries will be Tuesday. The bulletin says, "Please vote if you haven't voted." Done, 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 and done. Uh, this Wednesday, we'll be having our monthly fellowship meal after the service. We'll be having hamburgers and chips and. Some form, some form of dessert. Haven't decided exactly what yet. What's happening? What to come? A study of Bible prophecy series begins June 26th through August the 28th. Sunday nights at six o'clock. This is going to be led by David Wesley. Who's that? David Wesley. David Wesley. I mean, is he a church member? Yeah, he's a church member. He's a member of the church. Oh, sorry, I don't mind. I'll show him. I'll point him out to you this morning. Okay. Uh, for the Israel trip, VBS and youth camp, all three of them have uh, codes on here that if you're interested or you need to register, you go to put your phone camera on the code and it'll take you to a page to give you more information. Each one of those the Israel trip is next year, March 9th through the 19th. VBS is June 13th through the 15th. Volunteer sign-up sheets in the foyer. And youth camp is July 3rd through the 7th. For students that have completed 6th through 12th, it's $300. And you, once again, you can scan to, uh, to register for that. VBS raffle box tickets, raffle basket. Uh, our class, our class is... Uh, Got movie night as our theme. Movie night. <clears throat> movie night. Family movie night. So, and these are just options. You can do whatever you think um, 
fits for a family movie night, movie theater, gift card, Google Play or Prime Video gift card, Redbox gift card, fast food gift card, ice cream gift card, uh, family movie, DVD, box candy, snacks, bottle, soda, popcorn, popcorn, salt and flavors, popcorn bowls and containers, and blanket. I have something to say. Okay. If y'all already know from that list what you want, I'll go ahead and write you down, but I'm gonna get Brad to make that a sheet with all that stuff and then you can sign because I think they're due by June the 6th or the 10th pretty soon so probably you can yeah. next Sunday so if you June have 5th. an idea you can tell me and I'll put your name down it's June 5th for which I would agree or whatever if not so. I'll make a spreadsheet for next week and but this sheet will be up here if anybody you wants to look at it <laughs> yes ma'am Right, right. I don't want anybody to break the same thing. Yeah. Don't want anybody to show up with a red box gift card. Uh huh. I believe that that's pretty much all of them. So. For the past four weeks, we've been talking about end of days, and the, the final coming, and I believe we have one more after this, and then I, it'll wrap it up, but, but thus far, just to kind of lay the stage again, this, Jesus and the disciples are up on the Mount of Olives. And he's telling them these things, and he's just he's telling them what's going to happen. And again, why why do we know why do we need to know what's going to happen? We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. What what else? Well, we need to be prepared, but we need to be doing our part, going out and telling others and bringing them towards Christ. That's the job he gave us to do until the day. Yeah, I mean, you need to know you need to know the income, the out income, the outcome, so that if you are talking to somebody and the questions come up, you you can give you can give them an answer, or at least know know where to go to look for an answer. And if 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 the questions about end days comes up based on the last four weeks, you know that if you go into Matthew twenty four, you're gonna find the answers for what's gonna happen from 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 the rapture. Until to the end of the tribulation, or actually till the end of the millennium. So this lesson this week is more about kind of going with what Kim said is is continuing to serve faithfully. Okay, I got this backwards. Y'all bear with me a minute. Started it on the wrong slide. Okay. So we're in Matthew 24, 42 through 51. Les, you want to read it? Watch therefore, for you know not what, you, at what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. So what's, what's Matthew telling, what's Jesus telling the disciples, and what's Matthew telling us here? We don't know when he's coming. Well, you don't know when he's coming. Who knows when he's coming? God the Father. God the Father knows when he's coming. <coughs> what he's... Hmm? Well, he is the only one that knows. When he says it's time, like Alan said, Brother Alan said last week, he'll look at Jesus and the Holy Spirit and say, Sick him. But well, he was the only one that knew when uh, Jesus was going to come to you know, be born. He's yeah. the only one that knew. Yeah. So. And, it, and, it, and here, you. you and I had a hard time with this, and it's four lessons or five lessons into it now. It's finally sinking in with me. He's talking to the Jewish people, so there's a, there's a lot of tradition in the Jewish religion, and we talked last week about 
the Father designates when the Son and his friends go and get his bride. And that's, that's what he was referring to here. The only the Father knows when it's time. When he thinks it's time, when he thinks everything's done the way it's supposed to be done, then he'll send it. don't want to be like be like Les and be sitting there with Smith and Wesson waiting on him to come in. <laughs> you know, it's it's the the analogy is the same. It's a, the parable is you be ready. Be on your guard. We're all going to mess up, right? We're human, of course we we're are. human. We're sinners. We're going to mess up and you're going to drift and you're going to but the object is not to stay there. Come back and, and, and be prepared. Know that at any time it can happen. And there's only one way to be ready for that, and that's be living right. And that's what he's telling us here. If you know ahead of time, you'd be ready. If you knew ahead of time that the guy was going to break into your house, you'd either have the police waiting for him or you'd be waiting for him or something. You'd be ready and prepared. That's what they're saying here. Be prepared. It's coming. It's going to happen. Whether it happens today, tomorrow, or 10 years from now, or whatever, it's going to happen, so the best thing we can do is be prepared for it. That's why, you know, when, I mean, ever since I've been able to understand all this uh, growing up, you have all these people predict, predicting the end times and all that, and the end of the earth, or the thing of everything in 2000, you know, and I've never feared that, because just like it says, uh, Jesus said he will also return at an hour that no one think not. So nobody knows. So all these people as Christians, we can rest assured that, you know, it's not true. Anybody stands up and tells you that it's going to happen next week, we yeah. run away from it. Because that's what, even in uh, a couple of weeks ago, when it said you've got to believe in the teachings, the truth of the teachings of the Bible and of Jesus or we're going to fall into those traps of those people. Yeah. So like Jesus has told them a hundred times, if it wasn't so, I wouldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this. I'm, I'm telling you what's going to happen. You can take that to the bank. It's going to happen. Best thing you can do is put, pick up your bootstraps and be ready. As long as you're ready, you've got nothing to worry about. We talked about every, all the bad things that were going to happen during tribulation. There's going to be three and a half good years, three and a half bad years, real bad. And bad like 10 or 100 times worse than what we're seeing right now today. You know, everybody thinks we're seeing the beginning of ends of times. Well, there's ends of times. A lot of people say end of times started the day that Christ was crucified. The, that, that started the end days. You're in the age of the church now. Yeah. You don't know when it's going to happen. And in verse 34, it says, In the hour as you think not the Son of Man. I like the way the, the book put it, that it was just a way of saying that not only will Christ return at a time that is concealed from us, but it will also be at a time that seems least likely, would be least expected, expected. Yeah, so everybody's sitting here going, ooh, it's getting ready to happen. Mm -hmm. nah, don't believe that. I just think that the Bible does show us the signs. Those are prophesied, the signs that are going to happen. So that's, I think, another way of God telling us to start preparing <coughs> or to be prepared, like Kim said, to be prepared looking because he's coming. Yeah. And we just have to. And well, for, we're not supposed to fear either. You can't live in fear. You've that's what to. I was going to say. The, the thing is, if you're prepared... I mean, let's face it, if I'm prepared, if I'm ready, do I care? Right. This has been our hope from the beginning as we got saved. Yeah. That's the whole grounds of our salvation. Yes. I mean, you know, without that hope and knowing that Christ died for us and that we do have a home we're going to go to, but this is not our permanent home, we have nothing to fear. That's right. 
That's right. Because we win. The battle, the battle's already. The battle. The battle has. Yeah, the battle has already been fought and won. We may not like seeing what's going on, but we know that God wins. So well, and Jesus is coming again, and praise God, hallelujah for that. Yeah. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, <clears throat> when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all of his goods. Now the parable. What's he telling us here? To be faithful, to be wise, to be, you know, again, all, it all comes back to preparing obeying the key to these verses to me is verse 47 if the, you can take this a couple of different ways you could you could say they're talking about uh, a man of God that, uh, that is chosen to be a pastor that if he's good and faithful and he does what he's supposed to be doing, but you can apply it all the way down the line. Mm -hmm. If you're a good and faithful servant, you do what you're supposed to be doing, and you live the way you're supposed to live, and you take care of the master's things, and you take care of everything to his profit. Well, it's the same thing for us as believers mm -hmm. going out and spreading the word. We're taking care of the Father's property, right? You're, you're, you're trying to groom the Father's property and make it more profitable for the Father. And in verse 47, that he shall make him ruler all, all of his goods. So if <clears throat> the example here, <clears throat> the master's leaving for a, a, a extended period of time and he takes his head servant and says, you're in charge. And then the master shows up back shows up a week earlier than he's supposed to and he finds that everything's in order that, that the, his head servant has taken care of the rest of the servants that everybody's happy that everything is still profitable he took care of his business and, pr and promoted his business further then he's going to give him more responsibility right I like what the book says. It says a wise servant maintains a character of readiness and faithfulness to the task in front of him. Right. So we know our task. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to be faithful. And that's what that's what they're talking about here is mm -hmm. we be faithful to our task. What's our task? To spread the word of God. Spread the gospel. To live accordingly, to be a good example, and to spread the word. That's our responsibility, right? When I was reading, you read the lesson, and then I went in, and I'm real big on Wearsby, and I went in and read Wearsby, and he spoke about verse 47 for us. Once, you've, once you're saved, you're going to heaven, right? Can you lose your salvation? No. Cannot lose your salvation. But when you get there, there will be rewards handed out. There'll be crowns handed out for for your your deeds, your your good works that you've done here. Now, good works will not get you there, right? There's only one thing will get you there. But good works will get you crowns. If I forget what verses it's in, and I should have looked it up last night, but they talk oh, about where you go up and you lay your crowns at the feet of the of the saints. The, the rewards are, and what, what he was referring to in verse 47 is, this could mean, this, I mean, it could mean any number of things. It just depends on how far you want to take it. It means, this means that possibly when, when the new heaven comes down to earth, you could be a minister of, of the new heaven on earth. There will be rewards for you being a good and faithful servant. That's what he's saying in this parable, basically. You be a good and faithful servant. You do what you're supposed to be doing. And there's rewards waiting for you, the biggest of which is your salvation. 
which does, but it again does not come by works. The works are for the crowns that you get after that. So because you can get saved and come to church, do what you're supposed to do, and you know life just knocks you here or there or whatever, you can lose your fellowship with Christ, but you'll never lose your salvation. But when you use that fellowship, you're in a place. Like I said, God is always running after you. He's never going to leave us. We just got to get back to the place of forgiving, you know, asking and confessing our sins, like First John one nine says. But I've seen in my own family, I know they're saved, but their lifestyle just doesn't show it, and they don't act it. And I just want to shake them and say, "Where's your first love? What, what happened?" You know, they allow the world to seep in, and yeah. the world is evil and ugly. Yeah, it's, we all sin. I know. You know, we are, everybody, we're sinners, and and a sin is sin. There's no one sin greater than another. You know, sin is sin. Living in sin is one thing. Sinning and realizing what you sinned and, and beg for forgiveness for that and do your best not to repeat it again is something else. I think that exactly what this, these verses are talking about because if we don't study and if we don't watch, we can slip away. Mm -hmm. It's easy to slip away. It starts out with a little bang. I'm not going on. I'm tired. I'm not mm -hmm. going to get up and get dressed and go to church this way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do this. I'm not. Right. Going. You know, it, it creeps in. Yeah, I mean, that's like saying, Satan no, wants us. you're not yeah. doing anything. Yeah. Think about, think exactly. about one of the biggest things Satan did was this pandemic, right? Yep. That's a big one. That we've, but it kept people from going to church, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I know when I wasn't coming up here, oh. It was tough. It was tough maintaining my thought process. Exactly. Because you're not around other other believers. You're not getting fed by everybody else. You don't have anybody holding you accountable. And you're not focused. Yeah. I mean, you're at home and I'm in my pajamas watching the service. <laughs> and then I go, oh, I need a cup of coffee or I need to go do this. Or I think I'm going to make you something. Then I'll come back and watch it. This is not, I did the or same even thing. It's not right. I mean, and that's where I'm going. Or even right. worse than that. <laughs> You've yeah. got it recorded, so you pause exactly. it. Exactly. You know, exactly. or oh, I'll exactly. come back to it next week. Or, exactly. But anyway, the, the, the point is, if you're not, like Jeannie was saying, if you're not in the Word, you're not staying in the Word, you're not fellowshipping and, and staying with, with your brothers and sisters, it's easy to fall away. It is. We're meant to be together. Right. We're not meant to be apart and, and on an island all by ourselves. We need each other. We need each other. So it's that's what it's talking about here. Be a faithful and wise servant. Constantly do what you're supposed to be doing. And you'll be rewarded for such. <laughs> but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. <laughs> And shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in on a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's a whole lot in these verses. So what's happened here? Now we've got a servant that is not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And he's thinking, I'm in charge. I've got all of this right now. He's not here. He's not going to see what I'm doing. And I know about, I think I know when he's coming back. So all I got to do is right before he comes back, just whip everything back into shape and, and get it in order. And, I, and I'll be good and I'll be able to do all these other things and use this to my advantage while he's gone. And then the master shows up a week early. And everything is torn asunder. Everything's messed up. He's not taking care of his fellow servants. He's not taking care of the master's household. He's been out eating and drinking and being merry. And, you know, he, he brought up 
I believe it was in the lesson that brought up the whole deal about the drunkenness. And, and everybody says, well, everybody drank wine back then. Well, yeah, they did, because mostly the water wasn't good. But one of the things I didn't know, and I, I read it, was that the wine that they drank then is not the wine that we're drinking today. It, uh, according to Jewish custom, the wine is supposed to be two parts water and one part wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a difference between drinking and being drunk, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it, so, and, to, and in those days, back in, in these times, to be drunk was considered absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. It's just, you, you just didn't do that. You, you didn't do that. It was bad. So, bottom line here, this guy's taking advantage of a situation. He's continuing to live the way he wants to live regardless of what the master wants, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 51, And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Cut him asunder. This means to cut a person in two, a form of judgment used regularly in ancient times. Image, picture, severe judgment. Matthew also described his judgment as his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right, the cutting asunder, studied on it a little bit more, is probably more related to scourging, which is being beat with a whip and a rod. His, appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. This referred back to the Pharisees and how Christ referred to them as hypocrites. They were speaking one thing, and talk, talking out of the side of their mouth and living another way. Okay, I've got a question. Okay, gnashing of teeth, it says, it gives all these verses in Matthew, and it says, those who are thrown into hell, this indicates utter wretchedness and inconsolable grief by those who want to suffer great loss. Okay, but they're still living here on earth, right? It's talking about a judgment. Okay. okay. There's, right. there, was, there was two different... Here again, when I went in and studied on this, there was two ways of looking at this. One is a saved person that just wasn't living the way they were supposed to be. They're not going to lose their salvation. They're going to heaven, right? They just won't have the rewards in heaven that somebody that was following what they were supposed to be doing would have. The other way of looking at it, and you can apply it wherever you want to apply it, you apply it to somebody that is trying, that is not necessarily a believer and is trying, uh, is a false prophet and is trying to lead the children astray. When it talks about the weeping and gnashing of teeth, there's several places in the Bible where when it mentions that, it's referring to the lake of fire. It's referring to hell. And so you can, you can apply this however you want to apply it. it. It applies to everybody in some form or fashion. This, the way it's written here is applying it as a non-believer that is trying to lead people astray. That is just doing terrible things to, the, to God's children. But as a, as a believer, you're you're not you're not going to the lake of fire, right? You might you, you you may not have all the rewards that somebody else may have because of your works here while you're here and how much you did or didn't do. But you're not going to have the weeping and gnashing. But you you just won't get the the same rewards possibly. So you it's an application. You can put any any way you want to put it. Bottom line is what? Can I mean, be faithful serving and serving? Mm -hmm. Obeying yeah. and being faithful to his word and doing what we're supposed to do as Christians. Take the Lord as your Savior. Live as he would try to, not live, try, try to, to live. live. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the try to live as he would live. Try to do as he would do. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Ask yourself that question. Um, as we said before, the battle's been 
the battle's done. Battle's been won. You've got your salvation. You you know you know the end the end game. The object here is is to live your life out and be the faithful servant that you're supposed to be until that time arrives. We'd be it raptured up or whatever. And the way our, we live our lives is the biggest testimony <coughs> that we have because people are watching us and watching our reaction and everything we do. We don't, there's times we don't have to say a word. And um, people know, you know, you don't have to wear something around your neck saying, I'm a Christian. They're watching you. They, they know whether you are or not. And, um, at the end of our lesson, it talked about how hell is such an uncomfortable subject to talk about, but we have to because people need to understand there is a real heaven and there's a real hell, and one day you will go to one or the other. Um, and yep. do you really want to take a chance that that hell is where you're going to go? <laughs> well, if you stop and think about it, most times when you when somebody when we're talking about it, and you're right, hell doesn't come up. It's usually it's usually something along the lines of I'm afraid I'm not going to see you in heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm not going to see you in heaven, why am I not going to see you in heaven? And they don't believe in hell. Well, because there is a real hell. That's why that's why we need to understand this. That's why Jesus was teaching these principles to the disciples so that they can tell, let people understand. Take this free gift. It's a free gift. And and believe it and live it. If you don't, this is what you've got waiting for you. Wherever you are in the tribulation or the millennium, if if you not, if you don't believe and take the gospel and take the Lord as your Savior, end game is this. And, and, and we do tend to sugarcoat it by saying, oh, I'm not going to see you in heaven. Well, they need to know there is a real hell. We don't want to make people uncomfortable. But you know what? You have to get uncomfortable mm -hmm. to, I mean, that's the Holy Spirit tugging at you, letting you know, hey, you, you need to come to me. There has to be a little bit of uncomfortableness. Yeah. That's what Doug said last Sunday. He goes, you know, as a Christian, you've got to stand up and you're going to offend people and you're going to have people not like you, but... As a Christian, we have to say those uncomfortable things. That's exactly what he that's, said. That's what that's your that's what job. It it, is. That's your job. Mm -hmm. It's it's your job, and it, you know, there's a there's there's people. I'm and believe it or not, I'm one of them. It's hard for me to approach somebody. Yeah, well, it is, it is. It's hard for me. You, I know you don't think that's true of me, but I, it's well, for something like this. It's hard for me to approach it. But at a very minimum, I need to be living it. Yeah, exactly. Because if you're not living it, you'll be called out on it real quick about talking one thing and living another. And so what Kim's saying is true. If you're, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, living the way you're supposed to be doing, you'll be a peculiar people. You will stand out. They will notice something different about you. That's what you're supposed to be doing. So some of the principles, there's three, there was three principles given out, of, given out of this. God's rewards and punishments at the final judgment will depend in large part on the stewardship of his people to do the tasks that he has assigned them. What's our task? Spread the gospel. Live righteous and spread the gospel. <coughs> Faithful servanthood involves persevering even in the face of not knowing when the Lord will return and always mindful that He could come at any time. Also persevering in, in the face of criticism. You're, you're going to be criticized. It's not going to be easy. People are going to challenge you. The challenges are why you need to know these things. It's, it's, think about when you were uh, in a training class or when you were in school and you challenge somebody on something, you question it, and if they, they have an answer for you, you, you say, I'm, okay, cool, good, got that. 
But if you look at them and ask them questions and they start stammering and don't have an answer for you, you, you tend to, to not, they're not as believable, right? So that's why you need to know these things. That's why uh, Jeannie was, was saying you got to be into the Word. you got to understand the Word. Know what it says. It's a tool. It's the Lord's sword to, for you to battle with. It's a tool. I had someone ask me, I was doing um, voting for the Dupont School District on the 7th, and we had talked about Christ and stuff. She said, well, I'm not, I don't believe in all that church stuff. I said, well, it's not really church. It's about a living Savior. And she goes, well, let me ask you a question. I said, okay. He goes, what exactly does the Bible mean to you? And I went, okay, think about this. And I said, well, it's God's love letter to me. It's God's guidebook for me. And it's God's assurance that I'm going to be with him in heaven in eternity. I said, that, and that's the roadmap for me to follow to be what he wants me to be. I said, do I live it? Absolutely not. I do not. But I know if I didn't have that Bible, I would be a whole lot worse person than I am today. That's, a, that's good. It's a guidebook. It's his love letter to us. It's a guidebook. It, the, got a question? The answer's in there. You may have to f dig to find it, but the answer is in there. You can't live for your own comfort and sinful pleasure. That's just not the way it works. And and this, you know, this, I know, I know, I do know people that live according to, well, when my time comes and I know that I'm fixing to go, then I'll, I'll accept him and, and it'll all be good. That's a true statement. It's a true statement. But do you want to take that chance, really? You may not know when you're going. You may not be laying there saying, okay, I'm fixing to go. Be in a car wreck and it's over. Right. Like that. God's only going to let you reject him something. Exactly. You know, and that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Can you Then the Bible also tells you, you know, you can, you can only preach so much, then you have to wipe the dust off wipe your feet. Wipe the dust off your feet and walk away. Walk away. Yeah. But when it's a family member, that's the hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's hard to do with anybody, especially a family member. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you, you think of somebody in your life, in your family, just in your life, that, you, that you're very close to that is not a believer. And, and you know, you know, that when the time comes, you're not going to see them anymore. That's, that's hard. That's hard. Well, that's it. We got one more lesson in Matthew. And I, and I have not looked, per se, ahead at it to see what it is. But the, 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 the bottom line here. The message in this lesson is keep serving faithfully. As long as you keep serving faithfully, then you're prepared regardless of when, when he's coming. We know he's coming. We just don't know when. So why take a chance? Build, build, build your castle. Put your moat up. Get prepared to prevent anything bad from happening. And you know, we live for those accolades in life, for those little pats on the back. <coughs> the biggest pat we could ever get is when we die and have our Savior say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome aboard, well done. <clears throat> okay. Letting you out a little bit early. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> Something I did, I, and, and forgive me for not doing since we've got a few minutes. Was there any prayer requests? 
my mom is in pretty bad shape after taking a fall last week. I, I transported them around back for, from Lafayette to their house. And when I saw her, the first picture I saw, she had bruise on her forehead. When I saw her Thursday, she didn't have a spot of white on her face. I mean, the whole face is bruised. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, she still got trouble trying to figure out Bless you. what caused the blackout and blood problems or heart problems. So just keep her in prayer. Has anybody heard about Rusty and Joyce? I'm sorry? Rusty, mm -hmm. Rusty and Joyce? All I've heard, yeah, all I've heard was Rusty, Rusty's out of the hospital. Um, they found out what was wrong with him. I don't know that they've completely corrected it yet. They still don't know what's causing Joyce's uh, blackouts. They, or if they if they do, I have I haven't heard. I, I talked to Rusty while he was in the hospital, but I haven't talked to him since he got home. Well, there's a family that uh, I go on Wednesday mornings to this uh, Wednesday Warriors, uh, you know, I don't know what, it's, it's just a study of, of things in the Bible. Um, a lady in that church at Clare Point, her name is Dana Locke, or was Dana Locke. She fought cancer for three years, and God took her home uh, last Tuesday, I think. And she had uh, three children, and the husband had to when they put her on hospice, they had to come home and tell the kids that the mom was not going to make it because she fought, and then she fought hard. And the middle one, I think his name is Braxton, and uh, they said he's taking it really, really hard, and they're going to have a memorial for her on the 28th. So that young family just, and the husband, they just need that prayers for guidance and peace. But the church is really rallying around them. It's just when everybody goes away, yeah. that's yeah. when... And then he's on his own taking care of his three kids. Yeah. Okay, Les, you want to pray us out of here?